also maybe it's because I kept thinking about this because it's like a new hobby of mine slash full-blown addiction. I don't know, but I, we all have things that we're into, right? And I confess, true life, I'm addicted to houseplants. Is anybody else into houseplants in here? Am I the only one? Okay, I got a couple of you guys. <laughs> houseplants, outdoor plants, whatever you're into. I don't know how it happened, but over the last year, probably the beginning of lockdown, I don't know, I just masked up, blacked out, and went and bought a bunch of plants. I don't know how it happened, but I am kind of addicted. And I just, I come home with new plants and my husband just rolls his eyes and either that or he doesn't even notice anymore because I have so many, but I think he secretly loves it. But I'm like, chill, because first of all, plants produce oxygen, so we're well oxygenated, if that's how you say it, so you're welcome there. And second of all, there's a lot worse things you can be addicted to, right? So (laughs) I'm a new plant mama and I'm learning how to keep them alive. I've been learning a lot over the last year, so... Um, You know, some plants need a lot of water. Some plants need a lot of light. Some plants don't need very much water, and you can actually kill them by overwatering them. Didn't know that. Found that out the hard way a couple times. Um, There's a thing called root rot, just so you know. Um, But you might be sitting there like, okay, cool, love it. What does your addiction to plants have to do with me and what I can learn today? Well, just hang tight, because it's all going to tie in together, and you're going to see. But So in the spirit of freedom, summer, things blooming outside, and my addiction with plants, um, today I want to talk about roots, okay, being rooted. Um, And I I really meant to get my hair, these roots touched up before today, but (laughs) we'll just skip past that. Um, And as much as I would love to talk about houseplants this entire time, I actually kept feeling pulled, and as I was, like, preparing and researching, I actually am going to talk a little bit more, um, not just plants, but about trees. So y'all didn't know you were coming for a science nature lesson today, but you will. So if you were like, I didn't really like science in high school and stuff, I kind of just didn't pay attention, but here I am talking about it today. But let me just kind of lay the foundation a little bit about me here a little bit and um, kind of my journey to understanding what it even means to be rooted. Um, It's about 10 years ago, I was approaching my 20s, feels like a long time ago, Um, but I entered into this long season of kind of personal um, struggles, like we all go through those seasons. But some of you heard me share a little bit of my story, a little bit of my testimony, actually about two years ago exactly on this stage. Um, Fun fact, I still have not gone back and watched that or listened to it because I'm too cringy to watch myself. I just can't get myself to do it, maybe one day. But a couple, yeah, two years ago I shared a little bit um, just about some personal struggles, some health, um, just like my battle with uh, through eating disorders, stuff like that. Um, And so I learned a lot through that process over the last two, 10 years. But um, I'm just now realizing, honestly, getting more of a grasp of um, that all of that, all the struggles that I went through actually stemmed from me not being rooted in the right thing. And I was honestly planted in the wrong soil, per se. I was in the dark when I needed light. I was watering and focusing on all the wrong things. And I was, you could say, parched or malnourished uh, physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, can anybody relate? <laughs> whether, whether it's a health thing or whatever you're going through or have been through, I think no matter what, we can all kind of relate in one way or another to not being rooted in the right things in some area of our life. Um, maybe it's people pleasing, maybe it's comparison, maybe it's perfectionism, um, being too focused on what the world says, society, um, it just makes us feel like a hot mess, doesn't it? Even more than we already are, some of us, because I'm a hot mess. But living like this truly, um, you know, it makes us really vulnerable to the enemy and his lies. And we constantly can feel unworthy, not good enough, unqualified, all those things. And that is not how God designed us to live. He designed us to be thriving and growing and flourishing And y'all, as women, we carry a lot, don't we? We carry a lot. Um, The scene load, the more visual load of our jobs, our our house, our families, that motherhood, um, responsibilities, all the activities that we're running our kids or people to and from, all the hats we wear. So we carry that load, and then we also carry that, that mental, that more unseen load, the mental, the spiritual, the all of those emotional, that kind of weight that we carry too. Um, all the stuff that people don't even realize. So 
Honestly, over the last couple years, taking on motherhood and the ever-changing seasons of that, um, and then being called to step into youth leading and, and worship leading and how no matter all the things you put on your plate, like life does not slow down. You know, we catch ourselves saying, oh, maybe when things get a little bit less busy or when life slows down. It doesn't. It never does. I'm learning that quickly. But, and I would be lying if I said that I don't have times of like complete overwhelm, just like almost crippling stress, anxiety, those times where you just don't know how you're going to get through whatever you're walking through. Um, and I'm honestly just now realizing in the recent months, years, whatever, that in those times of complete overwhelm, what I have to do is a root check. <laughs> I got to stop myself and be, ask myself, where am I rooting myself here? Am I, am I rooting myself in people's opinions or am I trying too hard to fit in this box or do the right thing or say the right thing? Or, you know, is, is that why I'm feeling this way? Or maybe I'm actually spiritually dry. Have I been spending time with Jesus? Have I been rooting myself in him, finding my identity in him? What's really going on here? So today, you guys, I want us all to do a mental root check. As silly as that might sound, but when's the last time you were like, how are you really doing? Have, like really evaluating that. When somebody asks you, hey, how are you doing? We all are so quick to say, I'm good, I'm busy, you know, getting through it, whatever we say, whatever our response is, but how are you really doing? We need to check ourselves and could some of the struggles that maybe you are facing right now stem from the fact that you are not rooting yourself in the right soil? We gotta ask ourselves to that. So, you know, when we make the choice to follow Jesus, he wants us to go all in. He means all in. And because we're like the trees or the plants, whatever way you wanna look like it, and he is like the soil that we need to root ourselves in and dig deep down into. So this first verse I wanna share with you guys is, um, Paul is speaking to the early church, the early Christians in Colossians 2, 6 and 7. He says, so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. So it's literally biblical to root ourselves. There's so many verses that say root ourselves. Okay, so I told you we're going to have a little science lesson here, a little nature lesson, right? So here it is. Buckle up. Get ready. You're going to learn about trees today. Okay, so today I want to talk about three different types of trees um, that really help me kind of explain um, the, just the whole process of being rooted. So the first type of tree is called the worka tree. I believe we're going to see it up here. That's a huge tree. It's actually found in Ethiopia. Um, it's a type of fig tree, actually. And if you Google the Warka tree, you'll see like all these cute little kids like treating it like a jungle gym. It's huge. Um, they, they're climbing all over it, the shade. It's a huge, massive, very impressive tree. Um, but what's more impressive even than it's above ground is what's going on below the surface. Um, it's absolutely wild, their root system. They actually spread out, the roots of the worker tree spread out 10,000 square feet, which to put that into perspective, you guys remember like the athletic track in high school that your PE teacher made you run, the 400 meter? Or if you were in track, if you were into that thing, um, a 400 meter uh, oval, the whole inside area of that would cover 10,000 square feet. So just imagine like standing in the middle of that and thinking, the roots of this worker tree spread all the way out there. That's crazy. And these roots actually just keep on growing deeper and wider over time. And worker trees also live hundreds and hundreds of years. But how do they stay up for that? How do they stay planted and strong for that long? Well, it's because of their root system. It's so strong and so deep. And I think we all probably know or remember from science class that the basic function of roots is to provide nourishment to the trees, right? Um, and what is the application here? Why am I talking about work at trees? How does this apply to us? Well, the application here is that what's happening underneath the surface is essential to what happens above, right? Whether we're talking about trees or we're talking about our lives. And our strength and our depth of our spiritual lives truly depends on how well we are rooted, <laughs> how far are we spread out, how deep are we in our identity, our relationship with Jesus. So when things get hard, when life is rough, when you are going through it, where do you find yourself? Do you find yourself 
running to Jesus, digging yourself deep down into him? Or are you running to the word? Or are you running to the world? <laughs> we got to ask ourselves that stuff today because just like trees, when they get what they need from roots, we can get our nourishment from Jesus. He's everything we need. Roots, roots provide everything the trees need. Jesus provides everything we need. And we've got to remember that. We're not going to get the things we need and out there and out in society, out in the world, out on social media. Everything we could possibly ever need is found in our Jesus. So, you know, that time spent with him in the unseen, in the quiet times with Jesus, digging into his love, that's what's going to build you up, build your faith, build your strength, and keep you strong and, and keep you grounded. So another verse I want to share that this just kind of reminded me of this is Philippians 4.13. I think we're all probably a little familiar with this verse. Is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is our source, always will be, and that's how it was meant to be, that we run to him and we stay rooted in him. So that's the first tree. Second tree is the redwood tree. You might have heard of this before. Um, it's actually the tallest tree in the world at a staggering 378 feet. That's pretty crazy. I was looking up different structures, different buildings that may kind of be similar to this height. Um, but the thing, the one that I found that was probably the most familiar to us is like the Statue of Liberty. And that's only 305 feet from base to torch, which I mean, that's pretty tall too. But these trees are even taller than that. So pretty wild. But for the height of that tree, you would imagine that the root systems would have to be so, so, so deep. But they're actually not what you'd expect. They're only about 6 to 12 feet deep. So how, and these trees can stand for up to 1,200 years, I read, so hundreds of years, up to 1,000 years, and how can they withstand all the, the weather, the storms, the seasons, when they're not really that deeply rooted? Um, how, how do they stay up and stay grounded for that long? And the truth is, it's pretty cool, that they actually, the root systems of redwood trees, they actually grow in clusters. So uh, the roots intertwine with each other, with other trees. They literally hold each other up. How cool is that? So when the storms come, they draw strength from each other. Whatever hits them, the floods, <laughs> whatever it may be, they literally hold each other up. They draw strength from each other. So what's the application here with this one? It is this. If we're going to be rooted in Jesus, we got to be rooted in community too which is exactly what we're doing this morning. We gotta, we gotta have our girls, we gotta have our people, we gotta be rooted in community. It's essential in our spiritual lives. It's, you know, I, I can almost hear all my introverts and all my independent ladies out there, like the, the groaning, because I get it, because I'm naturally really introverted too. I'm kind of a homebody. Um, but it's the way God designed us. He designed us to live in harmony and community with each other, holding each other up, um, building each other up, relying on one another, supporting. And how much sweeter, how much better our lives are when we're doing it together. And just like redwoods would never reach their full height or their full potential if they weren't linked up and intertwined, we're the same exact way. We're never going to reach our full potential or what God's called us to do if, if we don't let other people in, if we don't do, if we don't work together, if we're not in community. And so just the fact that you're here today, you're doing this, you're, you got out and we're doing this this morning in community, I just, it's awesome. It's so great. And I love this, the women's ministry we've got going on. We, we, that's, we need it, ladies. We just do. So that is the application of the redwood tree. <laughs> got to have community. The last and final tree is called the Chinese bamboo tree. It's actually um, kind of unusual. You can see how tall it is by the people, that's the, the difference there. But um, it's very unusual. It's not, it doesn't grow the way most trees grow. Um, most trees grow incrementally, right? A little bit each year through the seasons, but not the Chinese bamboo. If you have a Chinese bamboo, bamboo, plant or seed or however it starts, you plant that thing in the ground, literally nothing happens for four years. I would give up on that after a couple weeks. I'd forget that I even planted it there, <laughs> to be honest. I would have given up. But something crazy happens in the fifth year. 
in a six week span in the fifth year, the Chinese bamboo emerges from the ground and grows to 90 feet, nine zero feet. That's pretty, can you just imagine like walking out to your yard one day and all of a sudden you have a 90 foot tree. And scientists that have studied this, which kudos to them, because I don't know who studies something that's unseen for four years, and then I, oh yeah, I forgot about that. But they studied this tree and found that some of them can grow up to three feet in one day. That's wild. So it's a very unusual tree. Um, And it is the fastest growing tree on earth. But what's happening for those four years underground? Like, is it just chilling? Is it like, hmm? Maybe I'll come out, maybe I won't, just dormant. No, it's developing its root system under there, in the unseen, in the dark, in the hidden, developing its root system. Um, so what's the application here? What does this have, what does this relate to us? The application is just because nothing's happening above the surface doesn't mean that God's not working below the surface. (laughs) Just like that song we all love, even when I don't see it, don't work in, even when I don't feel it, God is always working. And it's this is actually like a biblical pattern. The more you dig into the Bible, you'll read about God calling, putting a specific calling or a dream or a vision in somebody's life, um, speaking some promise into someone's life. And then what happens? It almost seems like their life go in the complete opposite direction, right? Like, okay, God, like, I, I, thought, I thought this is the way we're going, and now we're, I don't understand. And this is actually, you'll see it a lot in the Bible. You'll feel it a lot in your own life. Um, but, like, think about Joseph or David or Moses or Paul, all those struggles, all those hardships they went through, so many trials they went to before they got to the promises of God. And before, the, before those promises ever came to be in their lives, even Jesus, we don't know much about him until he ter- got into his 30s before he started his ministry. Um, but his, his roots, the, whole, the plan was coming about, and he, it, was, it was his pre- pre- preparation years all the way up until his 30s. Um, and then we obviously know what happened as he began his ministry. He fulfilled his whole purpose of dying and resurrecting and saving us. Um, so even Jesus went through this. Um, but the fact that, you know, what, what happens when God calls you to something? You, he's got to develop the roots in you. He's got to develop that foundation, build that foundation under you so that when the time comes for you to step into your calling, that you're able to sustain it and you're strong enough and you're built up enough. And, you know, I think that's actually the kindness of God to us. Because um, think about, you know, people who win the lottery or like make it really big when they're really young. And a lot of times you hear about them kind of turning their lives into, you know, ruining their lives. They're making a mess because they're not able to sustain it. They didn't have the, the foundation built up. They weren't ready. And so that is, I think, it's one way to look at our struggles is, or if nothing's happening in our lives or we feel like, you know, nothing's going the way we thought, it, you could look at it as the kindness of God. He's preparing you. He's building. He's, he's strengthening. Those roots are developing and spreading and growing. So, When the time comes, we'll be able to sustain it, the calling he has on our lives. So, okay, those were the three trees. There's your science lesson for today. Um, But if you think on it, where do you find yourself today? Let's do a root check in your mind. Do a root check. Let's, Let's think about, let's review a little bit like we're back in class. What do we learn from these three trees? So maybe ask yourself, are you feeling a little distant from God today? Are you feeling a little bit dry, <laughs> like you're trying to get your nourishment from things out there, other things other than Jesus? Let's remember the lesson of the work tree, that first tree, that what's happening below the surface is essential to what happens above the surface. We, well, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we are going through, when we're feeling empty, unworthy, when all this stuff's hitting us and we don't know how to deal, we got to dig our roots down into him. And that is how, when we are dug deep, when we are planted firmly in Jesus, that's going to show to other people. That's going to come out. You're going to be able to share and love in different ways and there's just going to be something different about you. So dig our roots down to him. We're not going to find what we need out there 
all our nourishment is in Jesus, just like roots of trees find their nourishment from the roots. So maybe, let's ask ourselves today, you might be feeling a little bit disconnected or isolated. Um, You know, it's not surprising after the year and a half-ish that we have been through (laughs) this extreme time of what's going on, this this isolation, lockdown. You know, maybe some of us are still kind of carrying a little bit of that, or maybe we're just naturally really introverted and we kind of close ourselves off. Um, Let's remember the lesson of the redwood tree that we got to find roots. we got to put our roots down in community, too, and how important that, that is. Maybe, maybe today you just need to be a little bit encouraged or challenged to get out of your comfort zone and draw strength and encourage and love on people. Do life with people. Get, get yourself around other believers, people who will build you up. It's so good for us, and it's so, so needed. I'm speaking to myself there, too. Um, and maybe you might be feeling a little discouraged today, like nothing in life is happening how you thought it would. You're like, okay, God, what's what's happening here? What's the plan? Let's think about that Chinese bamboo that just because nothing's happening out here, up here, doesn't mean that God's not working underneath the surface and preparing you for what's next, for the next season, for your calling, whatever he's preparing you for. And maybe the next step for you, if you're feeling that way, is just surrender your timeline, surrender your plans, surrender whatever you thought your life need to look at, look like right now, and just say, God, I trust you. I don't, I don't exactly understand this right now, but whatever you're doing, whatever you're working out under there, I trust you. And I, I'm going to trust your timeline and your plan because it's better than mine. And you know what you're doing. So maybe, maybe that's where you're at today. And, you know, when your foundations and your roots is established, um, that suddenly might happen, just like that bamboo tree shooting out of the ground. So we can learn a lot from trees as we, as we hear, but for a minute, I got to circle back to my true loves, my house plants. okay? I, I have to. I have to. I really want to talk about them the whole time, but I got to circle back. So because plants have roots, too. They, they matter. They're like little baby trees. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm a new plant mom, so I'm still learning. But there's a few things that I've learned from plants, too, in the last year or so. Um, first of all, you can overwater a plant, like I said. You can actually even use the wrong water. Some plants are really sassy, and they need filtered water. And certain, you can't just dump, like, well water on them like I was doing. Um, you also need uh, a lot of, pl- most plants need a drainage hole in the bottom of the pot, or else all that water is just going to collect there and rot your roots. Learned that the hard way. Um, and all of that that I just said, the you can overwater a plant, you can use the wrong water, you need drainage holes, all of that actually applies to us. And here's how. Because we can fill up with, like if we're using these analogies, we can fill up with too much of the wrong thing. We can fill up with the wrong water per se. Um, we can hold on to all of the wrong moisture, all the wrong kind of stuff in us. And without draining that extra water, um, our roots are going to rot, right? If we're filling ourselves up with all sorts of the wrong stuff, if we're not rooted in the right soil, you guys, our roots can do, (laughs) they can rot. They're not going to be as strong as we need them to be. We want to have strong roots, always growing, always reaching out, always, you know, taking on new territory, covering new ground, getting our nutrients from Jesus and nothing else. And... Um, Here's another little thing I learned. Sometimes plants will actually outgrow their pots. Found that out. You know, when the roots have no more room to grow, they just stop growing. Um, Their roots will just entangle around each other. If you take that bad boy out, it's like, ooh, you could tell it's not growing anymore. Um, And how that relates to us, maybe this is where you might find yourself today. Um, Have you outgrown your pot? per se. Um, Think about habits, relationships, um, things like that in your lives, environments maybe that no longer serve you, maybe that you've outgrown. 
that kind of situation, maybe it's preventing your growth. Maybe, maybe you're kind of stuck in a thought pattern that's holding you back, that's, that's um, preventing you from moving on, growing, entering into a new season. Maybe that's kind of where you're at. Um, on the other hand, I've also killed plants by transplanting them into bigger pots too soon or too often because I'm like, oh, this, this pot's prettier. I want to move you here. Or, you know, you just whatever, or it looks better or whatever. Grass is greener kind of thing. Um, and I want to relate that to us by staying rooted where you've been planted and called. There's something to be said about when, when God calls you somewhere, when you're planted somewhere, and stick in there long enough to see the promises of God fulfilled and to f- walk in the calling that he's placed on your life. You gotta stick around. You gotta, you gotta root yourself where God's called you to. There's something to be said about that. So, you know, wherever, wherever he plants you, wherever you um, are, there's growth to be made. There's stretching. There's developing, putting down roots, fulfilling your purpose where God has you. So, there's, yeah, there's, there's a few things I've learned about plants and, and what we can learn about them. Then, then there's this part about being a plant mom that was, was kind of hard that I, I had to learn, hard, learn the hard way too. Sometimes you have to cut away some dead stuff in order for the plant to grow and flourish, right? It feels painful and it feels almost counterproductive because you want it to be big and beautiful and green and growing, but it can't reach its full potential or its full growth with rotten dead leaves hanging and drooping and bringing the whole plant down, right? And we are the same way. Sometimes we have to look at ourselves, determine in our lives what's helping us grow and then what's unfruitful and holding us back and cut it off. (laughs) And then once that pruning is done, once the hard stuff's done, it's amazing what can happen, the flourishing that can happen in our lives. Um, Another verse I want to share with you guys is Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. And I know we all want to be women like that, right? We all have that desire to be women so deeply planted in faith by his living waters, women who can't bend, who can bend and not break when the strong winds of life try to come and blow us over, women who flourish for the glory of his kingdom and always are bearing good fruit, just like that verse says. So today I want us to do a mental root check. And think what our lives could be if we were truly and deeply rooted in Jesus. Because it's when we're rooted, planted, and grounded in Christ that we will really find that freedom that we're all longing for. So one more verse to leave us and strengthen us today. And it's Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. It's a little bit longer. I'll try to talk fast. So it says, I pray from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great, to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from him. So there's your science lesson for today, your nature lesson. I wanted y'all to go home with a little reminder to root yourself in him day by day. So these cute little baby succulents are a little gift to you. You guys can take them home. You can, you can do like little lunch table swap if you like one better. Trade them around, whatever you want to do. Um, but I want you guys to look at it every day, whether you pass by it and see it wherever you put it. Um, and just be reminded to root yourself in him. But take it from me. Don't water it too much. Maybe once a week or so. That'll be good. And uh, t- uh, trust me, or you'll kill it. <laughs> but I hope that those little baby succulents remind you that like the worka tree, your roots are essential. And like the redwood, you need community. And like the Chinese bamboo, 
God's always working underneath the surface. Thank you, guys.